All right, hi everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another video. Now, I've had some requests lately about my process and how I go about making pour paintings. So I thought I would show everyone today how I do that. I know when I did my paintings or my painting video a while back, a number of people were curious as to how I go about doing these pour paintings and how I go about adding these illustrations, what my process is. So I thought now would be as good a time as any to show you what my process is. But uh, before I start, I just hope everyone's doing well. I know it is a very difficult time right now, so I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's staying safe. Make sure to wash your hands. Make sure to stay indoors. So I thought now would be as good a time as any to do a video on my pore painting process. So I hope you enjoy the video. Now, I've laid out all my paints right here. I have a cup here that I use. I have my paints. I already poured the paint. The reason why I did that is because it would just take too long if I showed you step by step. I'm just going to show you with one, though. So one right here. I'm going to show you what my process is. Now, I use... Floatrol, as you can see right here, I use the Floatrol, and uh, you know you could use Floatrol, you could use Elmer's glue, whichever you prefer. I use Floatrol because I did my first ever pour painting with the Elmer's glue, and it took forever to dry. So because of that, I use the Floatrol. That's what a lot of people use, and that's what I'm going to be using as well. So. Nothing wrong with the Elmer's glue, it just takes a while to dry. I find the Floatrol much more efficient, dries much faster. So I put in a, maybe I don't know, a little more than a quarter of a cup of the Floatrol. I have the paint in there. Now, I don't measure it out because I kind of have a sense of how much I need. You could measure it, but I'm, I haven't really been all that meticulous with it. I then stir it. You get that uh, turquoise. This is turquoise. Gonna stir it. And you want it to have that kind of appearance of being kind of like melted ice cream. That's how you want it. When I initially did it, I didn't know how to do it. And I used some kind of pouring medium and it was very thin. And all the colors kind of melded together and it just didn't work. But then a time or two after that, I got it right. And I notice that, yeah, you have to make it kind of have that appearance of like melted ice cream. So next step is to put the silicone oil in. I have the silicone oil right here. It's going to put, I usually put about three drops in. And then I have the three drops in and then I stir it. One, two, three. That's my process with that. Now, the next part is to take the paint and put it in this cup. I'm going to do what they call a dirty pour. There's a lot of techniques. In fact, there's a lot of techniques that people have developed even since I started pour painting about a year and a half ago or so. So there's been quite a few techniques that people have developed since then. You know, you have... Uh, when I'm going to do the dirty pour, but you also have the puddle pour. And lately, I've been noticing people have been doing the puddle pour, where they'll do a puddle pour, they'll just pour it straight onto the canvas, and then they'll blow it out with a hair dryer. And that creates a really cool effect, I believe. But I'm just going to do the classic dirty pour, and then I'm going to show you on the canvas, because I have a little bit of a different technique. There's, you know, the flip cup, there's the flip and drag but I have a different technique that I'm going to show you. So as you can see, I just put some turquoise into here. Now I'm going to layer it on with some of the green. I'm going to put a little bit of the magenta in there, very pinkish color. 
And I'm going to put some blue. <clears throat> blue is always a color you kind of want to watch out for because blue does have a tendency to kind of take over a painting. So you kind of don't want to go too crazy with the blue or it'll take it over. Some more turquoise. And, you know, I use different variations of colors. This is yellow, but it's more of like a fluorescent yellow, as you can see. So I used the primary colors, but also a lot of variations of the primary colors. So adding a little more. I don't want the blue to really take it over too much. Now, this paint right here, and I do want to mention this, this is pre-mixed paint. And recently they've come out with pre-mixed paint. When I first started pour painting, they didn't have this. I couldn't find it anywhere. But now they've come out with this pre-mixed paint where it's already mixed. So you don't have to add Floetrol to it. You just add the silicone oil, which I did. So this is pre-mixed paint. And I'm going to add some of that. Now, some people like the pre-mixed paint. Some people don't. It kind of depends on the individual preference. I haven't had a problem with it. I've heard some people say they don't like it, but I haven't really noticed a difference. In the last painting I did, I used quite a bit of it. So I used quite a bit of blue pre-mixed paint on my last painting. So, now like I said, I don't have a problem with it. Now, I like to layer it a lot. As you can see, I am layering, which I do like to do a lot. I'm going to use some of this green right here, kind of more of like an emerald type green. In the last painting, I used quite a bit of this color. Again, a lot of different techniques you can use when you do this. There's the swirl technique. Recently, I saw a technique known as the broken swirl technique. And I thought that was pretty cool. You know, got kind of a cool effect. There's another effect where if you drag kind of the end of a brush across the painting, you'll get this kind of cool feather effect. And I haven't heard anyone talk anything about it or anything like that, but I have noticed you do get kind of a cool effect from that. So still layering it. Now keep in mind, a lot of this is kind of messy. Uh, you know, I, I'm wearing special clothes. You don't want to wear your good clothes. You don't want your shirts to get wrecked or your pants. So I am wearing clothes that uh, I don't care if it gets paint on it because, yeah, this can be messy. It's definitely a messy art. You know, got a lot of cups and stuff to clean up, so it can get very messy. But yeah, like I said, a lot of different techniques in pore painting. There's the string technique, which I haven't tried, where you drag a string across it. Some people will also do that with a chain, like a chain technique. It's a lot of interesting things that you can do. You know, I, I don't have a blowtorch today, but in the past I would use a blowtorch, and I would use the blowtorch across the canvas. I'm not going to do that today. I do find that the silicone oil and the Floetrol itself does make really good cells in a painting. So I don't really see a need to do that. Okay, so... Now I'm going to show you my technique. So 
So here's the canvas. I gessoed the canvas and I really couldn't emphasize gessoing enough. I mean, it's very important you gesso your canvas. I've lost probably two of my best pour paintings because the paintings went dark and that was because the canvas absorbed the color, the paint, and they ended up going dark and they were two really good ones. So I always make sure I gesso it really good. I gessoed it and then I put some wet gesso over it. Some people, uh, you know, like to have the canvas wet because it does help the colors to move across the canvas more. So I have my cup right here. I pick it up. I hold it. This helps kind of the colors streak across the canvas a lot better. I think I'm going to do it this way. This is always an angle I like doing it, and then the colors will just kind of streak across. So let's see what I get. I have these little hard to get areas on the edges. I do like to cover that. I have this thing where I do kind of like to get as much of that kind of stuff covered as I can. I'm gonna put it down now. Um, just try to get those little edges. Not everyone covers all the edges and every little piece of the canvas, but I do. Now, one thing you do kind of want to make sure you kind of do is you don't want to stretch the painting out too much. And the reason why you don't want to stretch it out too much is... The reason why you don't want to stretch it out too much is because you'll lose the cells. Now, Gina DeLuca, who's done a lot of uh, pore paintings, has talked about if you stretch it out too much, you'll lose the cells. You'll lose that effect. So, you know, you don't want to stretch it too much. So, let me just get kind of a close-up on it. Bag's providing a little bit of a, like a shade almost. So I kind of want to move that so you can see it a little better. Yeah, but that's it turned out. Really got some great cells. Again, you don't want to keep it stretch and stretch out the cells too much or you will lose them. You may think, and sort of counterintuitive, you may think the more I work on it and the more I try to uh the more I try to adjust the painting, the better it will be. The more time I spent on it, the better it will be. But that's not the case. You'll lose the cells if you do that. So as you can see I stopped pretty quickly. Now my style with my aesthetic is what I will do is I will look at what I had created and then I'll just try to look for things I could add, different illustrations. What kind of creatures could I add to this to enhance it? You know, what are the things that I could add to this painting that would enhance it and make it a better painting? What what could I add to it? You know, and I'll, you know, get look on the internet for, you know, dragons or various things, uh, whatever it be, you know, bears or different animals, and I'll position them in different areas. Sometimes when it's done and it's dried, I might even come back later with some more pore paint 
and maybe add like a ribbon or use the ribbon technique. Uh, you know, I'll do something like that. Or maybe I'll do add like a swirl or something. Anything that would help enhance the painting. I know recently I did on one of my paintings that used the swirl technique and I put a tree on top of it. So I'll, I'll look through, you know, look at the painting and see what I could add that would make, just make the painting look more cool. You know, I go by the cool factor. And I realize, and I said in the past, it, it may not sound real professional, but that's what I go by. You know, what looks cool? At the end of the day, I think that's very important. So that is my process. This is the painting. I think it turned out well. And uh, that's the dirty pour. Like I said, there's many different techniques you could utilize many different pour painting techniques. This was just one of them. What I would then do is I would let this sit for, they say it, three weeks. I have found that after about a week, you could varnish. I then will varnish the painting. And uh, that's a whole other video right there on how to varnish a painting because there's different ways to do that. So that's all I've got. If you've watched this video, as always, I thank you for watching, and be sure to stay safe out there. Have a good night.